here at the Tampa Bay Pro Combine. Before we kind of get into the event and what you've mm-hmm. seen here, how did you first get get involved with this event? Uh, it's a good question. You know, Matt, <laughs> Matt Babcock, uh, I've known Matt and his family, you know, through my basketball connections for a long time. And at this, page, at this stage of my career, honestly, as a former coach, ESPN broadcaster, I like helping guys. I like helping guys reach their dream. I'm always the guy. I'm, honestly, I say this humbly, Alex, because I've been around the game 40 years. I'm usually the guy that points out when a kid is a sophomore in the Big 12 or someplace like that, that he's going to play in the NBA. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden they end up on the mock drafts. And it's, it's a good feeling because I know people uh, value uh, value my opinion because I do love the game so much and study it. And so when they asked me to be involved with the Tampa Bay Pro Combine, obviously first year there's probably going to be some kinks that we have to work out. But overall, wow, um, the basketball was exceeded my expectations, especially when we put the, put, the, put this roster together in four weeks. So you were co-chair of the player selection committee. You and Matt, you and Matt, you know, brought yeah. all these guys here. Right. What were you kind of looking for as you were trying to figure out which players to bring? What was that process like? Well, you always want to bring the best players possible, but you know how the the system works with agents of guys who are going to be drafted, first round picks, second round picks. You're likely not to get those guys in most cases, but all of these guys, as we've learned as we watch the NBA, uh, there's over 100 guys in the league right now that went undrafted. I mean, with all the brain power in the NBA, and there are a lot of friends of mine who are really smart basketball evaluators, over 100 guys did not get drafted. Yeah. So I like the idea of coming here and helping uh, guys reach their dreams. And for a lot of these guys, their dream might be to play in Europe or the G League. There might be a couple guys here eventually will be NBA players. And one thing, I learned, one thing I've learned through the years being around the game is it might not happen like right away for a guy who's right out of college. But a couple of these guys are going to go to Europe, go to G League, mm-hmm. play basketball, fill out, mature, grow up. And all of a sudden, when they're 25 or 26, like a Royce O'Neal starting for the Utah Jazz, yeah. they're, you know, they're playing in the NBA. And that's, what you're, that's, what, that's kind of why I enjoy being around these kids this weekend. Absolutely. So you mentioned, you know, there was tons of competition out there. Yeah. The, the quality of basketball was great. You know, mm-hmm. the, the refs were great. Coaches were great. Yeah. Um, what were your thoughts just on how everything looked out there? We'll get into specific players in a second, yeah, but yeah. how did everything look for you? Uh, exceeded our expectations. Um, first of all, we had a great coaching staff. We had guys that had played and coached in the NBA, like James Posey, uh, Xavier Silas, uh, Bobby McKinnon, who won a G League championship, you know, uh, Jesus Verde- Verdo- Verdejo, who was a local uh Star, yeah. former former USF star, mm-hmm. former teammate of Matt Babcock. Yeah, my dad. Well, Matt had and, hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, Doc Martin, who has you know uh, been around the NBA and the G League, so we, we were really lucky. Um, they and, and these kids. By the time you get them, one, my experience has been either either here or over in Europe. That by the time they get to the end of their college career, at least over here, they know the game. So I thought the ball movement, the team play, the point guards were terrific. Kids like Demetri Trice from Wisconsin, Quad A Green, who was a I think our only McDonald's All American mm. that played today or this weekend. Um, we had great point guard play. The effort was great. The refereeing was great. You know, G League and college guys. So I thought the basketball from start to finish was pretty good. We ended up with two undefeated teams playing for a championship, and uh, um, you know, it's been fun. Yeah, you guys did a great job with it. Uh, you mentioned the point guards. Who were some other players that stood out to you? I know a lot of people were talking about Troy Baxter, yeah. uh, Chandler Vaudrin. Who were yeah. some guys that really stood out uh, about you know as you were kind of watching these games out there? Uh, well, Troy Troy was the most athletic kid here. You know, he's a Tallahassee kid. Played at Morgan State. Probably six eight, six eight and a half. Mm-hmm. I think was, I think he was listed at six nine, but you know how that goes. Uh, mm-hmm. But an NBA athlete. You know, some skill, uh, great shot blocking ability, obviously. Um, he's a kid that w- with raw potential for sure. Uh, he jumped out at me. You know, um, the kid from UMass Lowell, Obi. Um, and I, I didn't know much about him coming in. I, I should know his last name, but I thought he was tremendous. Is Noel? Noel? Yeah, Noel. O- Obi Noel. Yes. I mean, uh, I loved him. Yeah. Like, that's one of those kids that, you know, was a really good low major player that. Um, uh, really athletic, tough, hard nose. Who's you know likely to go overseas and play, but could come back when he's 26, and somebody will say that's a kid from UMass Lowell. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Chandler was good. Chandler, uh, uh, um, Vaudrin was good. He uh, he's, a, he's a big point guard. Has to shoot it better. Mm-hmm. He spent a year a day with us. 
Uh, Mitch, Mitch Bowock from Creighton, mm -hmm. kid I've known since his sophomore year, had a great day yesterday and then he left today. Um, throw, throw names at me because I'll tell you what I think. Uh, let's see. Ryan Daly was someone that I thought early yeah. on. He shot yeah. the ball really well. Ryan's can, Ryan, I watched Ryan at St. Joe's. His team wasn't great, but he can really score. I wouldn't say he's an NBA prospect at the moment, but he is going to get buckets wherever he plays, whatever level or league he plays in. Ryan uh, Daly is a scorer. For sure. And then just going back to the event overall, do yeah. you think we're going to see this become an annual event and just get bigger and bigger over time? I don't know yet. You know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's been a weird year with the pandemic. This is really like the first event. Unfortunately, it wasn't sanctioned. Uh, it was a great event, NBA. Um, your scouts would have loved, been, honestly, they would have loved to have been here to just, it, a, lot, a lot of times, Alex, I say this respectfully. Sometimes you need NBA scouts here to eliminate guys they're not sure of. Mm. Okay, it's not just who can play in the NBA. Is who do we know, need to go see that is just not ready yet, but we can check them off our list. That's that makes the, sense. That's the idea of a combine is to also check guys off the list. So, I hope so. The Tampa Bay community was phenomenal. This facility was great. Um, you know, the support around uh, what we call Pasco County, just on the outskirts of Tampa. Um, sponsorships were all really good. So, I, I hope this is something that can grow. And uh, I was I was glad to be a part of it just because I like to, you know, give back and, and share and get to know these kids. I mean, you probably talked to a lot of these guys. Yeah. They're just great kids. And a lot of these guys, I called their games as an ESPN broadcaster, and now I'm watching them try to fulfill some dreams. And last question for you. I've heard great feedback from the agents, from the players. Even some executives were saying they were watching. They were really yeah. impressed with the quality of the basketball. Yeah. What was the feedback that you were hearing from people? You know, I haven't honestly. I've been so busy running around. I haven't talked to anybody yet. Yeah, this is the first time you sat down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everywhere. Exactly. I just wanted to make sure that we ran a good basketball event. Mm -hmm. All, between the lines was our concern, Matt, Matt Babcock, and I, and we did. We definitely did. I mean, we had. Uh, I think the most impressive thing of all was how well these these former college stars played together. How hard they played, especially because we played four games in two days, and it's easy for guys to, quite frankly, bail out early. And I, there'd be a few guys that bailed out early that I've got in my head that I'll, that I'll tell my friends about, <laughs> uh, good and bad. Um, but I get it. But at the same time, I love the fact that we had guys out here competing until the very end. Hassan French from St. Louis, who was a monster yeah. college player who you know may not play in the NBA, but can play mm -hmm. and play somewhere and make money for a while. Or Jordan Goodwin, his teammate, yeah. or Demi Dimitri Trice, and so many others. I mean, we had a lot of good performances. Well, and credit to you guys because you guys assembled a great group here. Not only just the players, but you mentioned the coaches. You guys yeah. did a fantastic job. So congrats on a great event. Um, you know, I, uh, thank you, and I'm glad that we pulled it off and we had good basketball. For sure. Appreciate it. Thanks, Alex. Thanks so much. Thank Appreciate you. you. Yep.